Hey, all you tactical moms and dads out there and non-parents, even on a family vacation, dads need some time alone too. So there is a place called Burn by Rocky Patel in town. It's a great cigar lounge. Let's go check it out. Welcome guys to Burn by Rocky Patel, Naples, Florida. So to my left I have... Hello, my name is Alex Myers. I'm the humidor manager here at Burn by Rocky Patel. And to my right... Hello, my name is David Thompson. I am your in-house sales rep for Rocky Patel. So us three amigos worked here together back in 2013, 2016. Everybody has kind of blossomed and gone on their own paths. This guy right here got his doctorate. Uh, bachelor's. Oh, well, he's on the uh, way. On the way, on yes, the way yes, yes, soon. And then this guy has taken over most of the responsibilities at Rocky Patel Warehouse. Sorry, Rocky, you need to give him a raise. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to go Fine. through a basic cigar 101 for all of you guys out there. We understand that cigars are coming back into the culture of today, and not many know exactly what a cigar really is. You know, everybody knows it's to smoke it, but it's actually an art form and a craft that's been here for thousands of years. Little did everybody know that. So let's check it out. So this is your Connecticut wrapper cigar. This guy's gonna be very mild. So the difference between, you know, mild to medium is just different, different wrappers, different flavors. You have your Corojo, again, a little bit darker than the Connecticut. And then you have your Maduro. The difference between these cigars, this guy's been, this guy's just fresh off the wrapper, just fresh off the you know tobacco plant. This guy's aged, so you're gonna get a little bit more, a uh, lot more flavor, that's all. It's like, uh, these, these cigars are like cake. The outer cigar is like your icing and the inside could be chocolate. So when you change the wrapper, you can have the binder, the insides of the cake, be completely different or the same. You're changing, you're just simply just changing wrappers. Your Connecticut, your Maduro, and your Corojo. Same insides, just different, just different outsides. That's it. This is your Perfecto, four by 48. It's your classic dog walker cigar. It's about 20 to 35 minute cigar, smoke time. This is your Perfecto. This is your Petit Corona. It's a four and a half by 44. Another classic cigar, dog walking cigar. Half an hour, smoke time. This is your Petit Corolla. This is your Robusto. It's a five and a half by 50 cigar, or 
45 by 50. Smoke time, a half an hour to 45 minutes. This is your Robusto. Number one selling cigar size in the US, Toro, six and a half by 52. Smoke time, 45 minutes to an hour. This is your Toro. This is your Torpedo. Torpedo tip at the top or a pyramid. Six and a half by 52. Smoke time, 45 minutes to an hour. This is your Torpedo. Shouts out to Mr. Winston Churchill. Seven by 48, seven by 42, generally depending on the brands. Classic size. Thanks, Mr. Churchill. This is about a 45 minute to an hour smoke. This is your Churchill. And the Mac Daddy, the six by 60 for all you big ring gauge guys. 45 minutes to an hour and let's say 20 minutes cigar time. This is your six by 60. So this is your straight cutter. This is the head of the cigar. This is the foot of the cigar. You're cutting always the head of the cigar, the top. Not too bottom, not too much up the shoulders, but up the head. I'm gonna grab it firmly right here. If you cut too deep, it's gonna unravel. That's where the issue is. So you're literally cutting the head of the cigar, very, very top. Hold it firm, right hand. That's it, smooth. This is your punch cutter. Three different sizes, small, medium, large. The punch cutter is just a different version of your tobacco, um, your cutter. It's just a punch, a bullet hole out of the top of the cigar, leaving the cap intact. Again, hold it very firm, because if you don't hold it firm, you're gonna crack the cigar and you're not gonna get proper airflow. Wiggle it in, wiggle it out. That's your punch cutter. This right here is your V cutter. Generally, actually let's say, this is a preference. Each cut is your preference. I like to V cut my torpedoes because again, if you V cut this tor with a torpedo head, it leaves the cap entailed or intact. Again, firmly grasp the top of the cigar. Place it in the V cutter. Very firm clip. And you see, if you don't hold it firm enough, you get that split. But again, it's the firmness on the, on the cigar. This is your V cutter. So, old school way of lighting cigars traditionally has been matches. You can see why it's kind of an old school way. Um, angle it down and let it build up the flame, and then you just hold it. I'm using two matches at a time because it gets the job done. impractical nowadays um, so we have uh, thankfully come up with butane torch now one of the things when lighting a cigar is you always want to go ahead and uh, toast it a little bit that 
is so that when you light it traditionally, um, you normally get butane flavor in. So you toast it so that you get the flavor of the cigar the first time you puff on it. These are highly accurate. You can go ahead and touch up any mistakes you make or you know, if something's not burning properly, you can go ahead and fill it out. And some of these actually come in with little built-in punches and stuff like that and cutters so that you can go ahead and always have your gear with you on the road. Um, another way that a lot of people like to do it is with cedar sticks. So you just go ahead and light the cedar up. And this is the same cedar that's in cigar boxes, all that stuff. A little bit more. And he's gonna rotate it and get even coverage on it. And these burn quite nice. Oh, we go ahead and. See, that's why, honestly, the butane torch is the way to go, in my opinion. Just because, I mean, you have to refill it, yes, but at the same time, when it works, it always works. In the wind, everything. And again, honestly, when you light your cigar with cedar, it honestly gives your cigar a nice little sweet cedar beginning. So it's another uh, key point. But again, you're gonna have to touch it up with that butane lighter. Three parts of your cigar the wrapper binder and filler let's dig in wrapper outside of the cigar binder this is what holds the filler Filler. Wrapper binder filler, guys. Enjoy. When I think about pairings, I like to think of it as uh, one would with cooking. So it's all about contrasting flavors, um, salt and caramel, spicy and sweet. So when it comes to cigars, uh, for example, I've got Arturo Fuente's Work of Art. Um, and that's a Dominican tobacco, and Dominican tobaccos tend to be subtly sweet, which pairs really well with like something peaty or uh, like spicy. So for example, I've got Johnny Walker Black here. Um, the peatiness pairs really well with the nice sweetness of the tobacco. Um, it's a nice contrast in flavor. And uh, what it can actually do is actually act to enhance a flavor of a cigar. If you have something spicy to drink and you smoke something that's sweet, you're gonna actually change the flavor of the drink itself. Um, for example, the ALR 2nd Edition, which is Nicaraguan Backbone, um, nice and spicy, black pepper notes, pairs really well with a subtle bourbon, like a sweetness of like the corn mash and all that. Um, it's a really phenomenal smoke. Um, another cool thing is... Oh, good, sorry. And another cool thing is uh, if you actually take a sip of your drink before you smoke, it'll taste different than when you actually smoke it and then take a sip of your drink. It actually acts to enhance the flavor or it can mellow a flavor out, add little notes that'll pop out if you're not, um, you know, you wouldn't get those normally if you were drinking just that and not smoking. Very good insight. Join my cult. Yeah, so when I was back here with these guys back in the day, 2013, that was like what, eight, eight years ago? <laughs> so. We get a lot of individuals that come in here that have no idea what they're doing with cigars, but want to learn, are very intrigued and interested. Um, when you walk into the humidor here at Burn by Rocky Tell Naples, it's it's kind of like a candy shop for the cigar lover. But it There's, could be a little daunting. Absolutely. At first. Absolutely. You walk in, your eyes pop up, and you're just like, whoa, where to start? There's always a tobacconist on hand to help out and for you to choose. 
So when I was in there and anybody came in and asked, you know, what's a good cigar to smoke? My first question is, what are you drinking? Um, if you have a rum smoker, not rum smoker, I'm sorry, rum drinker, it's a very, very sweet contrasting liquor because it has that sugarcane infused in there and it's fermented. So whenever you have a drink, you kind of want to marry the flavors together, just like Alex was saying. You don't want to ever either cover up or under enhance something. You, just, you want to have a nice, fair balance and yin and yang of flavors. So for the LR, I'm sorry, I said that wrong again. Oh, yeah. LR second edition. LR second edition. I would pair this personally for myself. Again, it's your palate too. Everybody has a different palate. David might like something a little bit more peppery. Alex might like a little more sweet, but I might like something a little more woodsy. So it's really up to your palate. So you have to kind of cater to yourself. So I like the sweeter, mellower, um, woodsy cigars. I always tend to go with bourbon because you know it's always uh, fermented in oak barrels and you have a nice sweet, mellow, woodsy flavor. So that's how I would go with it. And yeah. playing off what you were saying, it's almost like, uh, you know, you know, some people like Cabernet Sauvignons and others like Petit Syrahs. At the end of the day, we both like red wine. We just have subtle differences in our palates that Correct. we like. Correct. Going back to the bourbon thing, it, you have the sweet ones, the peppery ones, the, the very, very heavy rye. smoke ones. Yep, you have the rye that's a completely different animal in itself. Um, sometimes I'll say, do you like wheat bread? And people will give me a kind of weird look, but that, it's actually kind of a flavor that you can get out of a cigar. <laughs> and you're bringing it back to the cooking aspect as well. Correct. Know? It's something that the everyday person um, can kind of relate to and not just get mind blown when somebody's like, oh yeah, it's a very leathery taste. Uh, did you lick leather in the last five minutes to know what leather tastes like? Right. So. Well, not only like that, that, but like uh, also the more you smoke, even if you don't pick up on notes that right off the bat, like the more you smoke, just like with the more you drink wine, you, you're not going to walk up and start immediately being like, oh, I have detect hints of dark cherry or something to that extent mm -hmm. but eventually once you start to sample multiple different types of wine you start to pick out those little subtle innuendos that like normally wouldn't present themselves so basically what we're trying to say is don't think you're going to pick up cigar aficionado and know exactly the cigar supposed to taste like the notes on the book it's again your palate somebody's going to taste peanuts you're going to taste coffee so in the end they're both nuts correct like what you like so enjoy. guys thank you for watching this video enjoy the cigars out there if you guys need any help give these guys a call we'll check you guys out in the next one